nanohub.org. You can follow along with this presentation using printed slides from the NanoHub. Visit www.nanohub.org and download the PDF file containing the slides for this presentation. Print them out and turn each page when you hear the following sound. Enjoy the show. Now I'm just going to do a, uh, a sort of a reminder of some of the quantum mechanics you, some of you might have even heard in high school. Right, just some, so this is uh, what are waves, what's quantization, uh, what are artificial atoms, and really a reminder of some very basic quantum mechanics uh, to get everybody on the same uh, footing. Um, so the, let me go through the presentation outline. I'm going to talk a little bit about classical systems, particles, propagating waves, standing waves, and chromatography. And then uh, some strange experimental results which really led to uh, quantum mechanics, uh, where, which deals with discrete optical spectra, the photoelectric effect, and the particle wave duality. And then I'll talk a little bit about heterostructures and quantum dots. What's a quantum dot? What's a resonant tunneling diode? And then some examples and uh, applications. And finally, I'm going to motivate some of the work in NEMO with resonant tunneling diodes and quantum dots as well. So let's talk about classical macroscopic particles. They have properties we all know and love, right? They have a finite extent. They have a finite weight. And they're countable with integers, right? That's generally how we think about classical particles. And they behave classical Newtonian motions, right? Which is the first things you, you learn in physics. And uh, they interact with other particles by energy con conservation and momentum conservation, right? Those are two fundamental conservation laws which you learn when you study physics. Um, some examples are billiard balls, right? And the, what to take away from this is this finite extent uh, is, but it's continuous, right? You can, it's finite extent, but you can chop a little bit off of this table, right? And you can do that at any measure principle. You don't think of atoms. There's no discreteness, right? Any arbitrary length will just be fine. And it has a finite weight, right? You can subdivide anything you want, you'll never in normal life hit to any discreteness. And uh, it's discrete, right? It's countable, right? Unless you deal with fluid, it's something you can count and number, right? So, so that's what we know and love about classical macroscopic particles. Uh, we also know about waves, right? So like a plane wave, a sine wave here, where we know they have really an infinite extent. Right? In a, a standard plane wave is infinitely extended. And, uh, but they have a finite wavelength. And they are at a finite frequency. Right? That's our normal way of thinking at, the, uh, at a wave that is described by a wave equation. And you might have a solution that is just some sinusoid that propagates with a, a certain uh, momentum and at a certain energy or frequency. So this is, this is just classical propagating plane waves. And we know that they interact with other waves or the environment. We know that there can be a coherent superposition. So you can have interference and constructive and destructive interference. Um, we even know that they can cancel out each other, right? Two waves add, and you can have these modulations, and these waves can cancel out, right? And there's, Nothing essential quantum mechanics about this. This is just normal properties of waves. And we know of the Huygens principle that uh, one plane wave can make up many, uh, can be made up by many circular waves, which uh, allows us to really describe diffraction and uh, w that waves can go around corners. All right, let's assume that you've heard of Huygens principle. So this animation was supposed to show how these waves propagate out just from a, like a single stone's throw in, in water. And the next uh, one is an animation that's pretty nice where you can really see nicely how these wave fronts add and the human eye can really see very nicely how a plane wave is starting to move. 
It's a very powerful animation. So now let's look, talk about uh, propagating plane waves um, and light being an electromagnetic wave. So in the uh, late 1800, it was understood that light is an electromagnetic wave and uh, the Maxwell's equations were formulated. And again, these properties are that they have an infinite extent and they have a finite wavelength and have a finite uh, uh, frequency. They obey this law of motion and they have uh, uh, interference effects. So here you can have this double split experiment and if, uh, if uh, the light were not a, uh, uh, well, if it's a wave theory, it predicts that uh, there's interference, you have these fringes. If it were a classical particle theory, it would not show fringes, it would be just uh, sort of a bulge of light. And, and the experiment really showed, well, there is fringes. So that was considered the, um, the proof that light is an electromagnetic wave. Right, that, that experiment of a double split experiment was the proof that light is an electromagnetic wave. Um, so, again, it's important to realize that they are not countable. They have an infinite extent. They have a finite wavelength, meaning they're continuous, and you, can't, you can give it any frequency, but it's continuous and they have a finite frequency, it's also continuous. There's nothing that prevents you to go from 1.1 megahertz to 1.112 megahertz, right? It's completely continuous. You pick a number, you can choose it, right? All right, now let's look at a property of standing waves. <coughs> you might have a guitar string or something which has a finite boundary condition on these waves. And we understand that these standing waves have a finite extent, right? They live in a discrete space, right? It's finite. It just doesn't propagate everywhere. It's finite. Um, it's discrete wavelengths. We know there's a half wave, a quarter wave length uh, that fits into these standing waves. And associated with that, you have discrete frequencies, right? So they obey the same law of motion, but the wave function that you associate with that looks different. It's not a propagating wave, it's a standing wave. Okay? And it's defined in a finite space and it's zero everywhere else. Okay? That's distinctly different than a propagating wave. It's a standing wave. And uh, we do know that these can interact with the environment by coherent superposition, right? Sounds add an instrument. Like that's how a guitar works, you strike the string and the vibrations excite the acoustic body of the guitar and that is what you hear, right? So these are coupled resonators, right? And they talk to each other, they're in tune, right? A musical instrument is tuned. So a standing wave, in the, uh, it can be a resonator, it can be coupled, and there's energy transferred between these resonators, right? And there's somewhat of an energy conservation again, right? But it's associated with waves. Not just with particles, but also with waves. Standing waves in this case. All right. So the thing to take away here is that this momentum here is quantized, right? It's discrete. And by the way, it can't take on any value anymore, just any, any old value. It's very discrete. And that discreteness is determined by the propagation velocity in this environment and its length. Okay? But it's not continuous anymore. 